Ready? Ja. Good morning guys and girls, it's finally time, Las Vegas, WSOP, today is day one and I'm still in Germany, it's so early, it's just 6am in the morning, but I'm kind of nervous and I'm already awake, I could sleep about 3 hours more, but yeah, what can I do? I already packed my stuff, finished everything, I think I got everything, and yeah, let's see what I can do in these 3 hours. But for the next days, for every day I will be in Vegas at the WSOP, there will be one episode, one vlog from every day. I will keep you updated with all the cash games, tournaments I will play, but also what I will spend there in Vegas as well for food, drinks, partying, etc. Okay, no more boring stuff at the beginning here. If I forgot something to say, I will keep you updated in the following vlogs or maybe in this one. Let's get some footage for the videos, huh? Ready? Ja, ready. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, after I arrived at the airport, I grouped up with my friends and checked in. Everything went very well and very quick, so we had some time to spend until we head off to Vegas. We had some drinks and got some food, all of us were already so hyped and fired up for the trip. We even started playing cards and flipped some PLO, No Limit Hold'em and even pineapple hands for 2 hours straight for 5 euro the hand. <laughs> we even continued our game at board. The flight was brutal, almost 12 hours and every one of us couldn't find much sleep. But then it was all worth it when we finally arrived. We got our luggage and headed straight to our Airbnb. Even though we were all very tired and a little wasted, no one wanted to stay at home. Before we even checked out every room of our location, we already ordered an Uber and went straight to the strip. Next up, Caesar's Palace. When we arrived there the place was packed and the poker room was full as hell. But that's not really a bizarre thing when you think WSOP is going on. We put ourselves on a list for the 1-3 game and there are about 30 people before us. We got some food and it took us only about one and a half hours before we pick up our seat. The max buy in for this 1-3 game is $300 and that's the amount I choose to. I took my seat and it only took me a few orbits to notice that this game is very nitty. A friend of mine has a lovely name for this poker room now, Knit Palace. And at least for the tables I played on I can confirm that. So I think we have to make some action.
So in the first hand I want to go over of our Vegas trip. I'm in the big blind with 6 dues of spades. The under the gun player raises to 11, which by the way is a new friend of mine. He was one of the guys I stayed with during this time in Vegas. Very nice, very friendly. A big shout out to you. You made this trip even more fun and exciting. Anyway, I decide to defend my big blind. So we are heads up to a flop and the dealer rolls over jack 10-3 with 2 spades. Not very bad for our hand and also not so bad for our range I guess. I check to my opponent and play in flow and he bets 10. I think that's a very good spot to check raise here and that's what I do. I raise to 30. My friend in the under the gun position is not concerned right now and sticks in the call. So we see a turn which is not a major improvement but it helps my hand. The dealer rolls over the 4 of hearts. So we got a gut shot besides our flush draw and that gives me green light to barrel again. And I size up to 60 now. We never played with each other and I think that's the reason he gives me credit and he lays his hand down. He later told me he had an overpair. I'm pretty sure that's the last time he folds an overpair versus me on such boards. So our image is kinda good now, or maybe bad, as you want to see it. It's almost 2am in the morning and we are very exhausted, very wasted and very tired in general. But to be honest, we will get used to that feeling at the poker table. Anyway, in the next hand, I'm on the button with pocket fives. I put on the button straddle to 6, which is allowed here at Caesars Palace and there are 3 limpers before me. I make it plus 20 to go and only 2 of the limpers decide to call. We see a flop of ace jack 6 with 2 spades and I see that on this board because I definitely have the range advantage in my opinion. And again we lose one player, only the big plan decides to call and we see another ace on the turn. The big plan checks to me once more and since there are some draws available I want to keep up the aggression and put pressure on his middling strength hands like flush draws or maybe a jack which will have a hard time calling here. I could work on my bet sizing here because I only bet 40. Not so much time goes by and the big blind calls. We see a brick in form of the three of clubs on the river and the big blind checks to me for a third time. Okay I think I have to slow down now. He's maybe trapping us and if he has a draw he will never pay another bet. So I check, I turn over my hand and we are good versus king seven of spades. That brings us to the last end of the night. There were a few smaller ones, but not so notable. And as I mentioned, I'm kinda tired. My notes were not on point. But that's a big and crucial one that make or break our session. We are in the cutoff with ace king of hearts and there's a button straddle to six. It falls all around to me and I race to 18. The button checks his cards and decides they are good enough to put in a three bet and he three bets to 60. He only has around 200 behind and with ace king suited. That's a clear four bet all in. I'm ready to play for all of it. It's not even even 100 bigs, especially with the straddle on, not even 50 bigs. So I put him all in and he snap calls. Alright, seems like we are flipping or we are way behind. The board runs out, queen jack 5, the turn and river bring in a 6, so we are only sitting here with ace high. I turn over my hand and my opponent shows me pocket tens. Wow, pocket tens, insta snap call? Hmm. We lose this massive hand right at the end of our session. Feels not very good, but it is what it is. We have so many more days to book some profit sessions, so no worries. Here at Caesars Palace we ended this session with a loss of $105. And at the end, here are the numbers for the complete day one. Thanks for watching guys. If you are interested in how my WSOP and Las Vegas trip goes on, please leave a like and subscribe under the channel. There are a lot more videos to come, so stay tuned and thanks again.